Yeah. Is it really necessary to permanently be situated in LA in, in your opinion? Or, and what, what are um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that anything has to be anything, you know, so literally, mm. like, everything is possible. However, um, I, I can't, I, I guess being in Los Angeles, just because of the pure amount, I think of projects and work that's happening, um, maybe just being close enough so that you can have a last minute meeting. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed part one and part two of our interview with Tina Guo. As you heard, she's shared such amazing and incredible advice for aspiring composers and instrumentalists around the world. Tina really is one of the best cello players, you know, in, in the industry right now. And she's played on scores like Wonder Woman, Sherlock Holmes, uh, The Dark Knight Rises. It's, you know, such a long list of incredible scores and soundtracks that she's been a part of and now she's been going on her own tours as well as touring with Hans Zimmer as well. So without further ado, check out part three here. I think the most important thing now is definitely a brand, you know, because is brand absolutely branding is the most important thing because if you if there's no way for you to stand out from you know, the tens of thousands of other very talented composers and there are, you know, there's so many that are so talented, but you know, Darwin's, you know, survival right. of the fittest, you have to like figure out what era am I in? Okay, social media era. How do I how do I push myself ahead? Because we're not even if you came right. to LA 10 years ago, it was different. You know, now it's like, you know, now, you know, that's now it's online. It right, online. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I always and, say like, everyone's a media, we're all technically we're like a walking, breathing media company, right? Yeah, all so of us, well, even, yeah, as, yeah, even yeah. as individuals. So it's, it's yeah, crazy. And, yeah, and I know, you know, it's tough and people are like, oh, how do you have the time? I'm tired. Like, oh, it's just too much to worry about. All I want to do is play my instrument or do my thing. Sorry, right. it's just, it's not going to happen. That's reality. You can do whatever you want, but to be, I right. feel like to be able to be a viable competitor in today's market, um, you know, of anything, it doesn't even, not even music, just anything that you're doing, you have to study what your, um, what your counterparts, I guess, are doing and understand what it is right. they're doing and how much time they're doing it for. And you have to do it more, you know? And so, yes, it is exhausting, right. you know? <laughs> Absolutely. But, yeah. Can, yeah. Tina, can you, can you touch on, you know, with the brand, um, <laughs> you know, coming back to that a little bit, can you right. touch on uh, one of the most, uh, you know, what, one of the most important questions I thought I had here was, you know, you're, you're a female musician, female composer, and yeah. you're also someone who, you know, we could say like myself, maybe ethnic minority, or I don't know how the, however people label us. I mean, I don't look right. at things like that, but um, how is that, uh, you know, how has that affected your career? Has it actually been able to make you stand out maybe in a more positive way or has it been has there been struggles has there been discrimination and how have you found that world in Hollywood and yeah. you know you again being female and you know Chinese background Chinese American so right you know the, the thing is it's like even I did a talk with um, some uh, com composition students uh, two weeks ago um, and I spoke to some of the students who uh, one of them was a Chinese girl um, and she mentioned that she felt like there might be discrimination or like she's talked to friends who are of the same ethnic background as I am and her and that people um, were discriminating but you know we all again we all have our own experiences so mine obviously is not the same as the next person even if they're also a Chinese female you know that's 33 years old um, um, so right. I, for me, I'm, I've always been a bit of a, um, I'm a very hard head as my parents say, you know, so it's like when my blinders are on, like, even if thing, maybe I didn't even notice, like, I just like keep charging, right. There's no, right. there's no, I'm just going. And so uh, my thing is always like be a laser. Like there's no, like, it doesn't even matter what happens. Like you're burning through everything anyway. Um, and I, I right. really think though, in wow. the end, no matter what, um, you know, pre preconceptions people might have about certain ethnicities or certain, you know, whether you're female, male, something in between, whatever, anything. Um, right. It's you as a person. It's your it's your determination, your skills. Obviously, if I if I was a bad cello player, no matter I always say, like, no matter how pretty you make the rapping, no matter how amazing your photos are, you get into the studio and you play out of tune or you can't sight read or, you know, that's it. Your right. career is over, you know, so it's not. um be a laser. Yeah. Sorry. It's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a comment now. <laughs> I didn't even know you could comment on this. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. And I, I really think in the end, it is every man, woman, child, animal, whatever for themselves, you know, so not for themselves, but like you are only solely, uh, you're the determinator of what people think of you. And even if they, right. you know, even if someone maybe met me and be like, eh, she's probably like, meh. and that happens sometimes where I've gone to like, um, maybe events where that I'm performing at, or like a show that I'm performing at, maybe they haven't seen me perform before or, um, and they might treat me judge you that way. You treat me in a different right. way before uh, they actually hear me play, you know, because um, yeah. I, I, I trust me, I, I understand like I am, I'm very lucky uh, that I, right. I'm female A, but also with the magic of makeup and all that stuff, you know, I can be construed as like, I'm just being totally honest here. I'm not going to pretend like, oh, absolutely. What do you mean? like absolutely. attractive, you know, and like yes. sex, absolutely. sexual appeal and femininity not just sex but like femininity and like being comfortable with your body and expressing our our emotions and the visceral things and all that which is like natural for me obviously that right. is a, a part of it and you don't have to have that there's plenty of people who are extremely successful who are not like that you know it's right. just depends what it is but um and i think because of that i have heard from um from friends and i think it still might happen now like in the local scene here in la and i, I understand it because it's human nature um, but from uh, specifically other female stream players who are younger you know who maybe don't quite know what's going on yet um will say things like oh she probably you know me she probably slept with the composers to get the work and i'm like oh, oh it's just gosh. like but the thing is it's like i don't even get mad it's like hey it's funny i used to get like upset about these things until i understood right. it's like not not that it's not their fault, but I think they're just not conscious yet, you know, and you can't get angry at people who are not conscious because it's like, right. you know, when, when it comes down to it, the actual, your actual work. So your music that you write, you know, what you sound like when you're recording, like that's the biggest thing. Cause I, I have, that's going to speak um, volumes, right? Yeah. And it's like, no matter what you say or do before, it, it doesn't matter because no matter how, even if you did sleep with everybody or I don't know, and that somehow worked and you're super sexy, but then you get into the studio and you sound horrible it's not going to last for too long. No, yeah. no, no it's not going to last you at mentioned. all. Have to replace you, you know, with, with someone right. else. It sounds good because, you know, it's not, we're not looking at you. So those are like two separate things. Um, and I think sometimes right. people, maybe they just get frustrated and they want to like put like blame, like, oh, it's because of this. Oh, it's because of that. I'm like, no, it's because I practice eight hours a day. You know, what, what are you right. doing? Eight hours you work a day? your tail yeah. off right yeah to get there yeah yeah exactly but but of that being said there are also a lot of amazing amazing musicians who can play in tune who play very well who maybe don't um care to brand themselves but which is fine again it's totally great but if you choose if you make that choice again everything is up to you right so if you make the right. choice no i'm not gonna do that i'm a whatever you know i only want to do my music and don't complain if you don't have work because you know that's it's um i think there there has to be a separation between your own music and you being an artist and this and that with your brand slash business like you said like a multimedia company because it is a business like you are the right. business and what kind of business is clientele if you don't advertise you know you got to make the most delicious cupcakes in the world that has zero calories but if nobody knows about it um <laughs> you know and you're in trouble you're gonna, yeah, you're in trouble. Right. So it's, it's the same thing. It's it's like with music, I always say to people like, oh, you know, specifically with music. I'm like, no, there's nothing specific to music at all. It's the same, no matter if you're selling fertilizer or, or music, you know, it's the same thing. So what I found really useful is taking the time, um, if you have a little bit of time each day to just uh, a learn about something that you don't know about because I guess you don't know ah. about things until, right? So whether Love it's that. like finances or like, you know, so maybe even if it's 20, 30 minutes, A, um, and then B, take a little bit of time because I do this as well. You know, sometimes I think we fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to people around us because it's the people in our city, even in our country, you know, and then sometimes uh, we it, it can be dangerous to fall into uh, what is it big fish in a small pond mentality right and so even even when I you know started and I was literally nothing I had nothing I, it sounds ridiculous you know people are like oh my god you're like that's ridiculous I'm like no I'm not comparing myself but you have to tell yourself if I'm here and who's the greatest cellist in the world you know right now Yo-Yo Ma he is absolutely amazing all right how do I get yeah. to the point yeah how can I play like him how can I I don't know, get, you know, and he's he, amazing branding, amazing, right? Probably the only classical right. musician that has actually, you know, did Sesame Street and really slid right. into the mainstream is like a recognized right. name, even to people who don't know classical music at all, right? So there is right. branding there. You think there's no branding, there's branding. For sure, he's a household name, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and, and all the stuff that he's done. And so that's just one example or comparing your music to um, the greatest composer or your most favorite composer. And be honest, like be horribly honest with yourself. Is my work, is my production comparable to Hans Zimmer or whoever? And if it's not, you're like, all right, I have some work to do, you know? And I know it's it's right. a really it's scary to think that way. But I think a lot of right. people don't want to think that way. They're like, well, you know, I'm, that's different. They're there. No, you're literally competing with him. You're competing with right that's who you're competing with the people at the top so you can't be at the top unless right. you're actually comparable to the top um and i think for me that's yeah that was something that i always thought about um it might seem a little ridiculous brilliant. especially if, like you're starting from nothing you're like how am i gonna i think it's back? brilliant um, brilliant thank you thank you yeah i think that's helpful definitely to get yourself into the right mindset you know for for awesome right stuff. and and when you, you know you got to shoot for the moon to land among the stars and what yeah. you're saying is you got to your your goal that or your target has got to be very clear and you use the word clear. laser right you got yeah. that laser focus on it yeah. eventually you're, yeah, you're going to yeah. get there you're going to get close enough yeah and there's also no there's no such thing as full work-life balance there's no such thing as full balance you know so like right. sometimes you're going to have right. to sacrifice some things to be able to have enough time and energy to do other things and i don't think there's any right and wrong it's just your personal choice you know um so that's the other thing right. where people think like oh i gotta find balance i'm like listen like maybe like it'll even out over a period of 10 years but there's, right. there's no balance you know you have to <laughs> you know go all in work 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 yeah 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 and there's you know there's different times for everything so tina thank you so much for your time we really thank appreciate you. it we're gonna thank let you uh run and get ready for your next session <laughs> yeah <laughs> your thank recording you. session the puppies haven't destroyed the place outside so we'll see <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much tina for your time and You're give welcome. our love to uh pizza and bagel as well yes yes thank you